Perfect. I think we got everyone on the webinar today. So I want to welcome everyone. My name is Stuart Blumenthal with Ethosystems. I'm the Intact Practice Director here. And today we are going to be talking about retainage and some of the tips and tricks regarding this. We're going to focus a lot on the AR side, but we'll also talk about the AP side of retainage. And it's, yeah, for retainage, we got a large group here today. So I'm glad that everyone was able to join. A uh, couple logistics to get started. Um, presentation's 30 minutes. Um, all the phone lines are muted, unfortunately, due to the large number of people on this call. Um, if anyone has any questions, please use the questions feature. Um, I've got that up on my screen. Um, also, if you want a copy of the webinar, like the PowerPoint, please let me know, and I just put your email address in there, and I will make sure that that is sent over to you um, afterwards. So from logistics, I think that is it. So let's just jump right into it. So a lot of a lot of you guys are using retainage within um, the system, and there's been some changes over the last couple of releases. Um, and I want to make sure that everyone's aware of those changes that have occurred in the system. In the past, there was two ways of handling retainage. One was through uh, well, in the past, there was only one way of doing it, and that's through the release retainage feature, which we'll demonstrate that when we're all said and done. Um, but since then, they have added something called project contracts. So project contracts, as we discussed in our previous webinar, and if you need a copy of that webinar, just let me know. It's also up on our YouTube channel. It's also up on our um, um, Ethos Systems um, webpage. Um, what project contracts does is it allows you to use something called project invoices, and, and what that does is allows you to generate the AIA um, forms that people have been wanting. In addition to that, one of the things they just recently added is the ability to release retainage when you're invoicing. So a lot of times um, in the past, you know, people would send out an invoice and um, they would have to send out a second invoice for the retainage release. That does not need to be done anymore. So again, you can either do it through project invoices, which we'll demonstrate today, or through release retainage. Um, so as we said, project invoices allow you to release the retainage. Um, at the same time you're creating the invoices, retain, re release retainage creates a separate invoice. Couple things to keep in mind, and these, these next couple of slides are a bunch of just tips and tricks. So first of all, when you release retainage, when you do it not as part of the invoice, but if you do it through the just the release retainage feature within the system, it will generate an invoice number automatically. Just uh, it uses a sequence number there. Uh, I, mean, I know several clients have been saying, hey, I want to be able to assign an invoice number to that. Unfortunately, you can't. It's automatic and it has to go through that process. Also, if you've been on the system for more than a year and then you try to release retainage through the project contracts or the project invoicing screens um, and you start using that, you might get an error message saying it's missing a GL account. In the AR configuration screen, as you'll see on my um, right hand side right here, um, we have the ability to enable retainage. There is a retainage receivable account, but they've also set up a clearing account. Um, so that field might be blank in your system. We definitely recommend, well, it is required field if you're going to start doing retainage again through project invoices, but make sure it's set to the same as the accounts receivable account. Our consultants can go through the journal entry it creates with you, but we do recommend setting these two to be equal. Um, and then again, we have the last feature here, which is the sequence number. A couple other things to keep in mind. Um, we do recommend using the project invoicing feature that again came out last year. Um, if you release through, um, if you do the re release retainage through the project invoice, it does create an AR release retainage record. So um, it actually is killing multiple birds with one stone. So I do recommend um, again, doing it this way and it does create this little record there. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that there's a lot of screens you have to make sure are checked to turn on retainage. And we, again, we talked about the AR setup options, but each one of your transaction definitions, and I'll show you that when we get into the system, each one of your transaction definitions, you wanna make sure you enable retainage. 
Um, so for example, I've got my transaction definition here for my AIA billing. And again, you want to make sure that enable retainage is changed. Check for that one as well um, if you're doing retainage. So again, there's a couple screens you got to make sure are checked to have, make sure that, that it's flowing all the way through the system. Couple other tips and tricks here. Make sure that under your customer, so again, so I have my customer green roads right here, um, under the additional information tab, in the very lower right-hand corner under the invoicing details, there's a default retainage percentage. Make sure that's filled in. That's really helpful for your customers. Um, you know, that way it prevents any type of error messages like, oops, I forgot that there's retainage on this contract. Um, so, you know, make sure that you've got that filled in. Um, if you have a large number of client customers in your system and you want to bulk update that, we can definitely do so. Um, you can export out the, your customer list, put the, um, put the uh, retainage percentages in Excel, and then bring back just that information. So it's, there is ways of bulk updating that information. And the next tip is, if you don't see retainage on your menus, and again, I'll show you when we get into the system, but if you don't see the option for retainage on your menus in AR and AP, first of all, make sure you have it activated or enabled as you've seen in the prior slides, but also make sure you have permissions. Um, that is the second most common reason or the first most common reason why people don't see the menu options. They don't have permissions. And again, it might have been that when the system was originally set up, you might not have had, and now you're working with it, that might be causing the issue. So again, permissions is always important from that aspect. Last thing, I always just bring this up just to make sure everyone's on the same page. If you run the standard custom agent report, the one that's right off the AR module menus there, it will show you the retainage balance. So as you can see here, I've got an invoice, I've got my balances uh, for each of the different periods. That is dictated by the setup options in the system there. And then you have a last field called your retainage balance, which is right there. Unfortunately, the one thing that is missing from the standard customer aging report, which everyone asked for, is the project number. Um, what project is that or job number is that associated to? So very simply, you can create a custom agent report by project. Um, if you don't have that report on your system, please let us know. We can install that. We actually have a now out of the box one that we can install on your system. But the only downfall to that, and we have um, let's say no, and no, it's on the roadmap for the upcoming, um, not its next release, but it is on the roadmap, is that they're going to add, it does not add the retainage to the custom aging report. So, and if you create a custom aging report, you cannot add the retainage balance to that. Um, so just keep that in mind so that if you want retainage on there, you have to look at the customer aging report. If you want the, if you want the by project, you have to actually then refer to another area and I do apologize for that. Again, it's something that we are, that Sage is, it's in the works for um, to Sage to add or fix in the system. So let's go in the system and walk through kind of what I said. I make sure that everyone is on the same page. So I'm gonna jump into my Sage Intact here. And so a couple things here, I am at the top level here. And so again, if I go into accounts receivable setup and we talked about this configuration here, you scroll down just a teeny bit and you got those re, um, enable AR retainage um, and your different fields there at that point. Um, I'm not gonna go into the customer screen and I'm not gonna show you the, the other, um, the other, um, the, uh, the, uh, I'm not gonna show you the reports since we just went over that. In my entity, I've got actually set up my transaction um, incorrectly uh, before I was playing around and doing playing around with this a little bit. But under my order entry here, under my transaction definitions, I've got my AIA billing one here. And that should actually be at the top level. But if you scroll down right here, again, this enable retainage um, is needs to be turned on. But any of these transactions that you have in your system, you'll see that I have quite a few in my system here. If you're having any type of retainage, you want to make sure that the enable retainage is turned on for orders or invoices or anything like that in the system. 
but let's go into the, let's go into a contract. So if I go into my projects and I go into my project contracts here, you'll see my contract in here. If I hit edit at this point here, um, and I can look at my lines down below, you can start seeing that I've got my different retainages. Um, um, I got my different lines and my retainage percentages in there. I can click on the little pencil at this point here, and this is where it's going to um, um, tell me how much my, what my retainage percentage is here. Um, what's really nice about any of these lines is that if you drill down into them, it will show you, um, you right at the top here, you know, like what's been billed, retainage balance. So obviously here, um, I have not released any retainage yet. So it's a straight 10% at that point. If I looked at the previous line, um, you'll see that I billed 4,300. I'm missing, um, I, I only have 30, $330 of retainage balance. So I've actually was playing around and build a little of the retainage in there. So that's why there's a difference. So again, um, look at the top of these screens. They're very helpful, gives you your total retainage balance. But again, the lines, um, you can look at the individual amounts per each line at the top here. So, Let's get into invoicing at this point here. Let's actually invoice this out. So if I go back here, go to my generate invoices feature at this point, um, what I wanna do is make sure that I do set this to be a project contract. Um, and at this point here, I've now set this up to be my AIA billing template. Um, I got the date on there. I'm gonna choose my contract of my La Quinta in Dallas, and I'm gonna choose today as the bill through date at this point and hit the preview button. When I come into here at this point, it's gonna ask me for my next application number. My last one was eight. I'm gonna make this number nine at this point here, and I'm gonna go down to my lines. So what I'm gonna do is focus on the concrete line, the one that has some a little bit of, um, so I'm gonna say, for example, at this one here that we completed, um, I'm gonna change my percentage completed to be 34.5%, just fill out a little bit of monies there on there at that point. And what it's telling me is that obviously if I had built, if I don't take any retainage, um, it's holding a retainage to hold this period is $230. So I'm billing actually uh, $2,071.75. Well, you know what? I'm going to fill out the retainage um, part of it or and so what I can see here is I could also see in the grid here my retainage balance over here on the left hand side so you know what I am going to bill out an even thousand dollars of that at this point here so I should bump that up to three thousand seventy one dollars and seventy five cents so you'll notice that I've got that there so again I'm billing out the line and I'm billing out the retainage so it's going to show both on the invoice at the same time instead of being this broken out aspect. I'm going to say at this point here, create the invoice. And at this point here, it's going to have created my invoice number uh, 00068. So if I go to my projects here, um, what I can do is I can actually, um, what I usually do is I go right to order entry and I can go straight and look at my AI billing. And at this point here, and I can see that one that was generated here. Um, what you'll see when you go to the lines aspect here is that you'll see at the very top of this invoice, retainage um, to build this period. So it's right at the very top. So again, it's really important that you turn on project contracts. It gives you all this. So we're retaining some monies at this point here, but we're also building out our retainage. And if we go to our lines, I know it's the third line here. Um, what it does is that it puts this one line in here saying that we're normally billing this amount, amount retained is 230, but what it's also doing is it's creating a secondary line in the system here to bill out the actual um, retainage bill for this period. So it's creating, it adds a secondary line to the invoice at this point here. Um, and at this point here, what I'm gonna do is hit the print and email button. I'm gonna print this off so that we have it on my screen. And at this point here is my AIA form or um, at this point here. Um, and what you'll see is that my certified amount is 
matches exactly. And then in my um, my my seminar three, you'll see that my amount retained um, my retained build shows up in here at that point. And for some reason, I'm having a problem finding it because I am looking on a very small grid, but it will show you the amount, um, the, the, sorry, the retainage build at this period here, so. So that produces that form. What this did in the background, just so that you know, is that if I look at the invoice, and again, for those accountants in the room here, what you'll see is that if I go to the posting details tab, and I don't know if you guys ever really do this. This is, again, some of the really neat things you can do with the invoice here. So you can see this is the invoice that was generated. Um, it's obviously, we're in it right now, but this is the actual journal entry that it did. So it hit AR for the full third, uh, the hit AR. It breaks out as two separate lines in the general ledger, which is the correct way of doing it. But it hit AR, um, which is my 1100 account, um, for the 2000 plus the 1000 there. And then what it did was, is that we had income, we're recognizing income here of uh, this, um, uh, we're recognizing the income of $2,000, uh, which is based upon part of our billings there. Um, we're all, uh, 23, sorry, $2,300 of our income. We're holding the retainage there. So this is my AR retainage account, but we're also taking the $1,000 out of the retainage there, uh, retainage receivable because we're now billing it. So you, you're basically crediting retainage receivables, debiting AR, and that's the proper way of hitting it. Uh, this is the, the, the there's a question here. Uh, the amount is actually correct because I actually still build, held retainage, even though I didn't fully bill it. So I was kind of doing both at the same time. Good point there, uh, but this actually is correct because I actually only built part of the retainage. We could have overread in that as well. One of the things to keep in mind is that you can also, at, you know, again on the screen here, you can look at any attachments, um, any uh, payment information that's on here, the whole history associated to this at this point here. So again, look at the tabs, make sure at the top of, again, of your, uh, if you're using the project contracts billing, you obviously have a lot more information up top here at this point, and it can be fully paid. Uh, it can be paid now at this point. If I go, also go take one step further here at this point here, if I go into accounts receivable, as I mentioned before, there is an option under here for retainage. So you'll see this little retainage here. So what does this do? If I go in here, what it just did was right now, it just created this um, invoice right here. It says AIA bill um, billing for that invoice. It released this. Um, record here and what it did was you'll see that it's actually the releasing the thousand dollars so this actually created a record in here that's not wrong they've created a record in here for that releasing of the thousand dollars of retainage at that point now let's say that you created the invoice at this point but you didn't release retainage you want to just release it all at the very very end at this point here it's an easy process here so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come into the screen here and you're gonna click on the add button. It's gonna ask us the date. I'm gonna hit, um, I could put in here, you know, release all retainage, um, you know, whatever I wanna put in here. You, description is not a required field. I can now hit the save and continue and it brings me into this screen. What you do at this point is hit the add button here and this will show you everything that's in your system that has retainage to be released. So in theory, if you looked at your AR aging report, again, we're all accountants and all PMs and all this fun stuff here. If I was to literally look at, at, at all my, my aging report, um, um, my custom aging report, I mean, my standard aging report, um, what's on there should match everything that's in this report. If there, it's not, let us know. Um, it could have been from a data migration in the early days or something like that, but just make sure that anything that's um, in your um, um, standard agent report is also on here. And so at this point here, I can say, you know what, I want to release this um, invoice, I release this retainage. I'm going to amount retain was $10. I can click on that and I can just say add selected. And I hit done when I'm all done at this point here. 
And at this point here, um, I, I can say um, release retainage and it's gonna go out and release it. Oops, forgot to, uh, mount, sorry, mount to release. I gotta put that in there, sorry. And now if I hit release retainage, it will go through and properly um, release that. And so that moved it, it basically made a journal entry, moving it from retainage receivables to AR receivable, because now that invoice is now due at that point. Um, question came in, how does it know how to populate the retainage completion versus stored materials? So stored materials was also another field um, in the grid when I created the, um, when I generated the invoice. So when you go in that invoice generation, you have all those lines, your S statement about your SOV, your schedule of values down there. You could have put in how much you want to bill of the stored materials in there as well. Hope that answers your question there. That was a good question. So at this point here, I released it. Um, I could also come in here and view it. And, um, and, and also just to, so that you know here at this point here, if I go up to my AR, um, look at my invoices that it generated, you will see now that invoice, um, they, um, my invoice right here, number four, um, and I can actually now format that. I don't think mine's formatted to print and send that retainage release to the customer at that point. So I can have sent that off if I wanted to um, for that $10 to say, hey, please pay me now. Question, can you please show the release retainage on the AR um, on the AR as open item? Um, So what that will do now is that if I go into my AR aging, let me just verify, no offense. I kind of use Bill, um, Bill Ricky a lot. So I just want to make sure I did that right. So if I go into my aging, my report, and I'm just going to go um, Bill Ricky Holdings. They want to print it for everyone. Hit the good old view button at this point here. Now what I'll see under here is that if I scroll down to the very, very bottom, you'll see that one for $10. It's underneath there at that point, and I could actually have drilled down into the invoice if I wanted to at that point. I could look at my posting details. And again, as I said here, actually, I got this going to tenants. I don't know why it went there, but that was weird. But, um, but it did co out, it did credit out or retain its receivables as it should. So it looks like uh, someone's been playing around with my AR account associated to that. If we build retention from the generate invoices, will that populate the AIA form? The answer is yeah. That's why you want to. That's why you want to do it through the. Again, why we recommend you going through projects here, going through generate invoices, and you want to run it through that process. Um, another question came in, and by the way. These are awesome. I love the question, so I appreciate it. Um, if I do not bill partial retainage in the AIA, can I release partial retainage from the retainage uh, module? So yeah, so that's exactly what we kind of went through there, is that what that allows me to do is that I can either go through accounts receivable, retainage. It also has the same shortcut under here, under projects. If I go through retainage, you'll see that it brings me right into AR retainage releases, and this is where I could do it manually myself. So I think I got the questions answered. If I didn't, let me know. Because I want to be honest. I want to make sure I answer them. So if I didn't, feel free to let me know. Um, good question. Or let me ask. Uh, I know it's not this is, I need help with change orders. Oh. Um, okay, so it uh, looks like there was a question regarding change orders and AIA and all that. Um, what I would recommend you doing is that we can we can go through that, um, send me an email afterwards, um, and I can have one of my consultants work with you on that aspect there about change orders. We're also just a FYI, shameless plug, and you'll see at the end of this uh, webinar, we're going to be uh, talking about change orders next month. Um, we're actually going to go through the whole change order process next month, uh, start to finish. But if you have a problem, just send me an email, um, stuart.blumenthal um, at uh, ethosystems.com, and I'll happy to get one of my consultants assigned for that.
Uh, perfect. So um, great question there. The last next question is, how do we handle it from the vendor side? Well, you kind of read my mind there. So let's just jump right into it. So if I go back to my PowerPoint here, from the AP side, just a couple of things before we get into the actual demo. Um, so in the AP side, make sure you have turned on enable AP retainage in the accounts payable area. Um, you'll have only two options here again. What is the next bill number that it's going to generate? And most, and the second part is um, the um, retainage payables account. Just like in, um, just like in AR, there's going to be some similarities in these next couple statements. One is that make, if you have multiple purchasing transactions, make sure you enable retainage on each one of those. Really important to do. Um, also, uh, make sure you set the default retainage percentage for the vendor. So each vendor has a default retainage percentage as well. You can set that um, again through the vendors. It's actually on the same tab, the additional tab, the second tab on the vendor screen, just like it is on the customer screen. And again, if you wanted to update that for a lot of vendors, you're able to do that through a bulk update. Um, and same premise that the standard vendor aging report will show the retainage balance, but not the project ID. If you create a custom aging report, a custom vendor aging report uh, by what has the project, you can't have the retainage balance on that. So let's take a look at that process here. So if I go into here, what you'll see is that if I go into my purchasing area here, um, and if I create a purchase order, um, we'll just do one that has not been converted. Um, so it's a little bit older. I'm hoping the retainage is on here. I didn't check this before. If I scroll down here, perfect. So if I had if for this vendor here, and if I click on the little vendor, it brings me into this little, brings me into that additional screen, um, that little pop-up screen. I can click on the additional information. And again, I got that default retainage percentage right down there. Um, this one's set to zero, but at this point here, um, I'm going to come in here and do a little bit of an override since this has not been converted yet. I'm going to change here and say, you know what, we've got 10% retainage at that point, and it calculates the $50 at this point here. So I'm going to hit the good old post button at this point to save my changes. At this point here, I'm now going to take that one and I'm going to convert this to a vendor invoice. When I do that, it's gonna bring me down here and I've got my um, price of $500. I'm gonna retain, still have 10% retainage. So at this point here, my total bill is gonna be only be $450 because I'm retaining, I'm retaining 10%. So just to show you, I have to make sure this all works correctly. Hit the good old post button. Forgot to put the vendor in, invoice number in here. I'm gonna put in today's date, 4-13-2023. Post button, no more errors, please. And that got posted at that point here. So I can look at that one invoice. If I um, go in to view it, you'll see that um, if I actually look at the actual bill itself, so let's go into the posting details, um, you'll see the amount due is $450 at that point here. And you'll see all my journal entries that it created at this point here. So for my liabilities is $450, cost of materials, and then that retainage receivable is the other $50. So it creates the two liability, hits the two liability accounts at that point. Hopefully those journal entries are acceptable to everyone in the room. Um, and if I was to actually go in and run a, um, sorry, let me verify the vendor, vendor's ACE drywall. Here. So if I go into my payables, run my vendor aging report, and for ACE, you'll see that at this point here, it has now created that invoice for $450 with a $50 retainage balance at that point. Now let's take it one step further. So if now if I go in accounts payable, which I'm in, I go to retainage. I'm gonna hit the, um, well, we'll just hit add and we'll just create a new one just to be safe and hit save and continue. I'm able to come in here, hit add at this point and I can find that in my list. Again, it should be 
possibly that first one on the list. Yep, it was right there on top because of a drywall. If I need, if I knew their name, I could start typing it in there. I'm going to take this first one, add selected, and done. And now I'm going to release the amount to release is going to be fifty dollars. And at this point here, I can now release that retainage. And now that will now be amount that I could pay next time when I do my next. It will now show me I owe an additional fifty dollars to this vendor at that point. So a couple questions came in. Good questions so far. Um, what if I didn't create the PO? I need to enter retainage for the invoice with no pay, PO. So interesting one there. That's an interesting one. So if you want to, you could theoretically come into AP bills. Um, so if you haven't, if you just want to enter in retainage by itself, um, I'm going to come into AP bills. I'm going to create a new bill for ACE because I feel like uh, blowing this vendor up today. And we're going to scroll down a teeny bit here. And I'm going to put in a, um, actually, I should not do it through here. I take that back, did the wrong area, you caught me off guard. I'm going to create an invoice right on the fly, a vendor invoice on the fly, and I'll explain why in a second. This actually, I don't have to put a GL account in here. So take that back. Don't go through AP bills, go through PO, um, vendor invoices here. I'm going to do this one again, Ace Drywall. And what I'm able to do at this point here is that I'm going to say for the project, and I'm going to choose my La Quinta Dallas. Cost code is, I'll just do some French drains. Hopefully I get something that works perfectly. The reason I did that is that it brought in that item ID. I don't need to worry about the, um, I don't need to worry about the, um, so you get, don't do it through AP, do it through PO. Um, but at this point here, let's say that I've got a price of um, $1,000 or whatever I want to retain, or we'll just make it $100 to make it easy. I could put the retainage percentage as $100. So what it's going to do is that when I post this invoice here, I don't know anything. It's all going to go right into retainage. So I'm going to hit post at this point here, vendor invoice number is required, 0423. 13, 2023, A, post that invoice in the system. So if I now look at, for example, let's have a little bit of fun here. Let's go look at my vendor aging, my report. Um, again, we'll choose our buddies at Ace Drywall and view that. You'll see that I do not show anything I owe on that invoice. 100% of it went to retainage balance. And now I can show that in the system. And then later I am able to now um, release that retainage later. I hope that answered your question there. So went through a little bit more than I planned on that, but I thought it was uh, important. So you could do 100% um, retainage to solve that issue. Again, importance is that if you have questions like, you know, again, moving forward, if you have questions like that, talk to your consultant that, you know, talk to your consultant, put a support ticket in with us here at Ethos Systems. Happy to help you guys out. So getting back to the PowerPoint here. Oops, wrong slide. So I don't see any other questions came in in the meantime. If they do, great, I'll answer them. Um, upcoming webinar. So there's going to be one that's beforehand that's to be determined. Um, Sage is releasing on May 12th. They are releasing um, Friday, May 12th. They're releasing the R2 release. Um, that It's going to have new features in there. Um, each of the next, the R3 release is going to be really the big one where they're supposed to be adding compliance um, module, which we're really excited about because that's included for all of our construction clients. Um, but the May 12th release, we're going to have a webinar probably like the week of or the week before going over all the changes in there. So um, there'll be a, a, what that webinar is yet to be determined. But the other ones next month, we're doing change order tips and tricks. Um, and then some things that people have asked for is purchase order approvals and accounts payable and general ledger approvals. And the reason we broke these into two separate um, classes was before because these are two different processes and they're very they're they're a little bit different because of the complexity 
with transaction definitions. So we started off with the, oops, oh man. We started off with the purchase order one and then we'll hit AP and general ledger in August. Um, also in our July one, uh, we're gonna be doing over the real estate module for those who are um, have real estate. Um, there's a really cool real estate module and we're gonna be doing some tips and tricks on that aspect. So again, lots of good questions. If anyone wants to ask any questions, they are more than welcome to do so. Um, also, again, I've got a couple of them from the email addresses that I will send out the PowerPoint. Um, these are all recorded um, along the way. And I think that is really it. And again, if you have to reach me, um, here's my email address and feel free to do, feel free to send me any questions you might have as well. Make sure there's no last questions. Nope. So I want to appreciate everyone. Thank you for everyone's time today. Hopefully it was valuable and um, have a great, um, have a great day.